So now we're making a brief excursion or perhaps a return to coordinate geometry. And we're going to talk about in this video uh, lines and slopes. So you've got to be able to know how to recognize a line, how to figure out its slope, how to figure out what points may be on that line, and also to figure out what lines may be parallel or perpendicular to that line. So let's go ahead and draw a quick set of axes. And let's say we've got a line. Um, say we're given the, uh, you know, let me give you a line first. So let's say we have this line. Let's say the points of this line are, we're told that this is negative 2, negative 3, sorry, 0. And we're told that this point is, I don't know, Four, four. What is the slope of this line? Well, to figure out the slope, we have to use the slope formula. So m, which is the slope, equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now again, the general formula for a line is y equals mx plus b. We'll get to that in a second, but let's figure out the slope of this guy for a second. So. The twos and the ones don't really matter. All it's saying is that you got to make sure that this represents one point and this represents another point. You got to be consistent with how you do your subtraction. So let's go ahead and do this. So four will be my y two. So four minus my y one will be zero. Over. So I got to keep my four over here because that's going to be my x two minus negative three. So this is going to turn into four over seven which is the slope. So the slope of this guy is 4 over 7. And what does that mean? The other way to think about slope is change in y and change in x, or rise over run. So it pretty much tells us how steep, or not steep, a line is. If it's positive slope, it goes this way. As you can see here, we got a 4, out of, four over 7. That's a positive number, and that is a positive slope. A negative slope would look in this direction, so going down uh, from left to right. Now. What is a slope? Well, let's think about this. Rise over run. So it means for every 4 that I rise, so 1, 2, 3, 4, I have to run 7. So that means go to the right 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, this is not a perfect graph, but you get the point, right? This is where the slope comes in. You're forming almost like little triangles. And this goes to any ratio, right? So this would also be the same as for every 2 steps I rise, I run 3.5. So it would be like, one, two, and then three and a half. One, two, three and a half-ish. So it's not an exactly perfect straight line here, but you get the idea, right? Um, this would be a point right here as well, and so on. So uh, what else do we have to say? So in this case, for our formula, this would be y equals 4 sevenths x plus, and now this. This is called the y-intercept. And that's essentially, where does the line hit the y-axis? Why is it that? Well, because when it hits the y-axis, that means x is 0. And if x is 0, this term cancels, just leaving the b. So y equals b. And that's where the y-intercept comes from, because it's when x is 0, what is y? So in this case, we can look at this, and it looks like it's going to be 2. So this equation for this line is 4 over 7x plus 2. And that's pretty much all there is to it when it comes to lines. Uh, let's look at another example. Let's say you're given this set of axes, and you're told you're given this line, and it runs through the origin, and they give you a point, negative 4, negative 3. Or negative 4, positive 3, it would be. How do we find the slope? Well, you might say to yourself, well, listen, I need two points to do it. Where's my second point? On this one over here, I was given two points, but it doesn't seem like I was given two points in this one. Well, actually, you were. Whenever they tell you it goes through the origin, that means it's going through point zero zero, and now you can figure out a slope. So let's do that. The slope is just going to be, well, let's we'll do 3 minus 0 over minus 4 minus 0. So the slope here is negative 3 over 4. And again, this time we have a negative slope, so that's why it's running in this way. Uh, so. In this case, y would equal minus 3 over 4. What's the y-intercept? Oh, x. Plus, what's the y-intercept? Well, it goes through 0, 0, so the y-intercept is 0, so it's just this. That is the equation for this line. Uh, what else could we do with this? All right, so how about parallel lines? Let's say we were given the line y equals 2x plus 7, and maybe that would look something like, I don't know, this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is not going to be a perfect picture we get the point. What would be a line parallel to this? Well, a line parallel to this would be something like this, right? 
it would be a line that never intersects it. What is similar about these two lines? Certainly not the y-intercept. I mean, they're hitting the y-axis at different places. But look, the slope is the same. They go up in the same way. And that has to be true, right? If they didn't have the same slopes, they would eventually intersect. So any parallel line has the same slope. So one example could be 2x plus, this is like you know 2x plus 3, essentially, or something like that. Maybe 2x plus 2 would be better. right? This is parallel because the slopes are equal. So parallel is equal slopes. What about a perpendicular line? What if I drew a line like this that was perpendicular, formed a right angle? What would be the equation of this line? Well, in this case, it's a little bit hard to see what the relationship between this line and the original line would be. So I'll just tell it to you. It's called the negative reciprocal of the slope. So if this guy's slope is 2, the negative reciprocal means flip it and then negate it. So the slope of this line would be negative 1 half. And then I'm not sure what it's going to be in this exact case. The y-intercept would be something. Let's just make it up. One line that would be parallel would be y equals minus 1 half x minus 2 or something like that. right? That would be parallel because all we care about is the slope. This slope is a negative reciprocal to this. Another way to put it is the slope of the two, two lines when multiplied. So when we multiply 2 times minus 1 half, minus a half should equal negative 1. So the slope of a line and a perpendicular line, when multiplied, equal negative 1. The easier way to put that, in my opinion, is just to say that they're negative reciprocals of each other. Uh, so that's parallel lines. That's perpendicular lines. Let me think if there's anything else we need to do. Um, I don't think so. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, well, let's just one more thing. What if we were given an equation and we needed to graph it for some reason? So let's say we were told it was 3x minus 2. How would we graph this? Well, the easiest way is just to make an xy table and plug in values. So if x is 0, y is minus 2. We already knew the y-intercept was 0, negative 2 anyway, but that's beyond the point. Uh, how about 1? That would be 1. We plug 1 in here, we get 3 minus 2 is 1. So 1, 1 would be a point. And now we're pretty much good. We can fill in more points. and. Uh, to just to make our you know picture a little more accurate for our drawing, but really all we need is two points, right? Because two points define a line. So let's do I don't know negative one. That'd be minus five. So negative one, three, four, five, and then maybe we'll do two. So that would be four. So two, one, two, three, four, two. No wait. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. So this should be one, one like this. So I messed up that graph. There we go. So this would be 2. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. That would be right here. And you can see the line shape starting to form. So here would be our line, y equals 3x minus 2. And this is pretty much all you need to know about lines for the SAT.